AI or high performance computing doesn't really matter here. The, it's a, a matter of uh, methodology. And some of the people are actually idle. They don't use the systems, all right? So imagine that there are hundreds of you that are not using the systems, and I could use theirs, but because of this separation, I'm not using it. So what if I could do something like that? What if I could have in between an intelligent software, an intelligent orchestrator that allows all users, based on some assumptions and some quotas, to take time and portion of a big compute cluster and use it for a specific amount of time. So, instead of having between you 100 different workstations and each one using its own, you have a cluster of 100 workstations and each one has a quota and using whenever they want based on specific um, policies. So this is the way to go forward and do it. When you have a big installation, you have an installation at scale. You should know that the biggest problem with high performance computing and AI, in the real world, is the operational aspect. What happens when you finish your model? So, what we do is this. We have a web interface, um, we have a management stack, and then you have your compute nodes, you put some agents on the compute node, and then there is an administrator that decides what quotas you have. So when you press a button, your model injects into a Red Hat, for example, operating system, Lico rearranges your cluster, and it starts running. When your quota ends, you pull up your data, and Lico will actually destroy the cluster and return everything to the free pool for the next one. And this is done automatically. You don't have to worry about installations or anything else. Right? Now, imagine the problem if you have to run one model on 1,000 servers for one hour. You have to install your model on 1,000 servers. It's not an easy task if you do it manually. So this thing can actually do it automatically. That's what it's built to do. So it fits here. So you know that if you do AI, mostly HPC, there is a first stage where you have to gather your data, analyze your data, normalize your data, cleanse your data. That's a big, big thing. But the major issue is in the middle where you actually train and you fine tune the hyperparameters and then you go loops around that until you show that the, uh, the model you are using is correctly biased and operates correctly. So Lico, this software actually fits here. It automates this process for many users that are using the same cluster. Get the point? Now, underneath it, uh, it's not rocket science. It's just open source tools. There are only two things that are contributed by Lenovo here, which are probably the most important ones. The XCAD and Confluent, which are the real management tools to control the, the cluster. The big thing here is that Lenovo actually contributes to this cluster or stack that you see here and actually provides support. So if someone gets this from us, if he hits a problem, he doesn't have to go to the community. He comes to us, and we solve the problem. We have dedicated people behind that. So although this is a very interesting and very smart tool, it actually is based on open source technology. Now, I want to tell you what a program manager for this tool actually does. Have you ever heard uh, this title for a person? Program manager. So a program manager does all these things. He is the guy that gets hit on the head if something goes wrong, and he's usually the guy that gets attacked if everything is okay. So the program manager is the end-to-end -end responsible for the product to come on the right time and on the right budget in the market. So he's responsible for pretty much everything. He coordinates development teams. He alerts marketing for everything they have to do. He coordinates with support organization because the product, when it comes to the market, someone needs to support it and provide maintenance. 
so they need to know how to do it. He organizes trainings in order to train engineers. He actually collects information from the market and from the different vendors that cooperate in this in order to go forward and provide the right features. He understands the difference between features that have to be embedded now and features that have to be embedded later. And he also understands the different financials behind these decisions. So this profile is actually a person, lady or a, or a gentleman, who actually has a multitude of talents. It's breadth that we require here. He has a solid background in technical aspects. He understands financials and he is a very solid risk taker because in order to have on time and on budget something, you have to take some risks and make the necessary actions in order for them to get you. All right? So this is one of the examples that I wanted to share with you about one thing that, uh, that we do at Innova. So let's try a second one. The second one, which is just happens to be one of my favorite, is the workstation computing. So Lenovo has a very big, a very successful line of workstations. So workstations are computers, endpoints, that are designed to be extremely at the edge when they are used. So if you want to correlate this to cars, you have normal cars, you have fast cars, you have very fast cars, and then you have Formula One. Workstation is the Formula One of computers. They are designed to be operated at their limits continuously. So behind this technology here, there are very different things. There are different material, different research and development teams, different people that design, different marketing, everything is different. These things are designed to be operated at the extreme. So we have both desktop and mobile workstations, and I think uh, we had it in the foyer one of our mobile workstations, and they are very unique. So imagine that you can have something on your desk that has two CPUs and one terabyte of RAM on the desk. It's very amazing. So this is the kind of things that we're building at the extreme. And of course, these require extreme users. And to have extreme users, and I want you to pay attention to this, you need to have a very good understanding of what is going on with the independent software vendors. The software that will run on this workstation has to be certified, has to be tested. So you can actually sell to someone the complete solution and they can be sure that this works correctly, right? So it's not only extreme, it's, only, it's also guaranteed that it will work. So pay attention to the ISV. So one of the examples is AI again. So depending on what you want to do, we have sizes and prices, of course, uh, for every job. Starting from our P520, if you want to do some data preparation, some cleansing, some normalization. Then if you want to train a model, then you go to the P920, which we have outside, and then if you want to do, if you're ready, you've trained your model and you want to do inference somewhere at the edge, you have a time workstation or a P520 that allows you to do that. Now, everything here takes GPUs because GPUs are unavoidably something that allows you to do things faster, uh, both in high performance computing, both in, also in rendering and AI. So this is the kind of, uh, you know, strategy we have around the different use cases. Again, it is about ISVs, independent software vendors. How well do you actually test your workstations and how well do you guarantee that they work in the best possible way? So, who does that? This guy, or girl. It's an alliance manager. If you haven't heard that before, it's a very interesting job. So, this guy has a very strange job. He needs to understand what the Lenovo strategy is for a specific product or solution. He also needs to understand what the strategy is from an independent software vendor. For example, let's say Adobe, all right? And then he has to come back and convince everyone that they need to have a common understanding on this. 
So it's not directly responsible for everything, but he has an influence on almost everything. He is the one who understands marketing. He is the one that talks to the development teams. He is the one that, that brings vision into the team and shows them what the other side, the ISV, does, and also correlates this to the opportunity in the market. He's the one that sizes the opportunity, understands the opportunity, and pushes to get budget and to put forward something. So this is actually a very obscure position. Here we go again for breadth. So this person usually has some technical background, usually a bit more than required, but he also can understand budgeting. He has very sound decision-made capabilities in order to build a vision and a cooperation. This person requires very good interpersonal skills because he comes into contact with many people from the different vendors and he needs to understand, to understand not only the vendor position but also the personal position that each, each one has. So this is also an interesting and very, uh, I would call it, uh, not very usually found position. The third one, the third example I want to show you is the infrastructure as a service offering we have, which we call it true scale. So everyone knows, you know, this um, subscription services that we get for everything, eh? almost everything. Music, you can get mail, you can get money. Eh? So why would we do that in a data center or for our PCs if we are a big company or enterprise or even a university? Well, until now, the only, let's say, good example of that would be public cloud. But for public cloud, by definition, you don't own anything. You just access, use, and pay according to the users, right? Now, what if, for some reason, you didn't want to access something publicly, but you would want something to be inside your data center and be owned by you, but in an intelligent way? So how would you do that? Well, there is a way. For us, it's called a true scale program. So what we do is we let our customer, our enterprise, decide what they want to purchase, server, software, services, storage, doesn't really matter what it is, licenses, all right? And then we have an intelligent way of calculating that and splitting down the price over a period of three or four or five years. Now, there's a big difference here between leasing and this. Leasing carries really no risk. Leasing, you pay for what you buy. For this one, you pay for what you use. It's very different. It carries risk both, both for the one who sells, us, and for the one who uses, the customer, right? So we have this, let's say, tool, this offering, where someone can you know, elect to buy something of, let's say, a price of one million. And then we calculate how much this will cost over four years. And the person gets charged according to the users. If they use nothing, they only get charged 5% of the price. That's the base minimum. Above that, they start to pay based on the users. So it's cloud, it's very intelligent, but it's owned in premise, right? In the data center. What's even more intelligent is the way we calculate the users. We don't care how many VMs we have, we don't care how much storage you use, we don't really care how many licenses you have. We only care what's the power consumption. We build based on power consumption. So all the systems you buy from us have an embedded system that measures consumption. We have a management server. Everything is directed there. And then it's thrown out into a, uh, let's say, a public server. And from there, from then we build. This is very unique in our industry. No one else has this at this point, because you can actually do many tricks, but always based on the, uh, on the power consumption. So all of the other people who offer, companies who offer something like this, they actually operate based on you know, VMs or uh, capacity you use and things like that. We don't care about that. We just care about the power consumption. 
and we found a very intelligent way to correlate power consumption with the actual usage of, usage of the component, right? Now, if you want to have something like that, there is a guy or a girl who can help you do that, and it's called a solution consultant. Um, we have very few of those in the world as Lenovo. It's a very rare breed of people. And their job is to create a financial and technical proposal that will be winning, that will be fitting to what the customer needs, and of course will be beneficially uh, good for Lenovo. And these two things are very difficult to correlate. So, these people have a very, very solid technical background. They usually have over 20 years of experience in technical positions. But one of the things that distinguishes them is that they understand very good financials. So this proposal or this solution actually makes you go into the future. You have to go and think five years from now, what is the risk for you and what are the risks for the customer? What will be the new technologies that will be arriving in two years? And how will the customer change his mind? And all these things have to be taken into account when you create a price for your customer. So it's not only a technical decision that you make, it's a risk analysis that you have to do, both for the customer, but for Lenovo as well, and make it profitable for both. So it's really a very rare um, type of uh, uh, individual that is given this responsibility to operate uh, for this solution. We have very few of those and very good. So this is a very, um, let's say, high impact uh, position within Lenovo. And of course, this is a person that has a very big responsibility on shoulders. All right? Final one, Think Shield. It's our, uh, let's say, security umbrella. So we have these four, let's say, components, data, identity, device, and online. Here you have, let's say, the basic questions that uh, you have to ask if you want to understand what each one of those is. So umbrella it is called because for every product or for every solution that we sell, each one of those questions needs to be answered and then our teams need to make sure that these are adhered to. So when we ask for a server how my data are encrypted and are protected, then we should also be giving answer for that for a mobile phone, for a storage system, for a server, no matter what, for any solution. So these four aspects that you see here are actually um, have extensions into every product we sell and every solution we sell, right? I cannot describe all this in this time that I have, but I have elected two examples, which I think are very impressive, just to give you a practical example of what we're doing. This is the first one. It's the privacy guard with the privacy alert. So if, you, if you're in a plane and you just write your uh, document proposal, the guy sitting next to you can actually see what you write, right? Now, there is some privacy solutions. You can put a film on, you can put uh, an automated film on, or things like that. But if you buy this and you have an infrared camera, the system actually can tell you if someone is looking at you. It's quite amazing. Also, the system understands if you're looking. So if you move your head away, it blurs down. So no one can actually see what you're doing at that point. This is quite an amazing, uh, let's say, little technology that makes things just a bit safer for everyone. And this requires, as I told you, an infrared camera. It's not available on everything we sell, but it is on our um, high-end products. That's quite uh, a smart technology. Now the second one that I wanted to tell you is the match on chip for fingerprints. Now, as Lenovo, we were the first one to put something embedded for security uh, way back in 2004, if I remember correct, yes? But now we have the ability to actually hardwire the fingerprint in 
into a chip. So you can actually be very certain that your credentials are protected, not in software, but in hardware. So this is also a very small part of the entire umbrella of pink chip that we have. Now, who does that and who designs that? Remember, this is for every product that Lenovo has. Every solution that Lenovo has has to go through, through this definition of security and pink seal uh, the four pilots. <coughs> so the guy is actually, or the girl, is called the chief architect. Now, this guy and this guy will go for depth. This is a very competent guy on security and the surrounding items of technology that need to be addressed. He's the one that builds vision. He's the one that discusses with other vendors, with other bodies that govern security as we know it today. He's the one that needs to convince the upper management that they need to invest in creating this product. And he's the one that continuously changes the mind of development teams in order to go for something new if he believes that this is uh, the best solution. So this is a guy that has quite an experience. He's the person that can decide which items in the equation make sense, which items in the equation actually will make money for Lenovo, and which are the ones that will be mostly wanted by the customers. So this person is actually a person that leads the entire team of technical people and gives them guidance in going forward. So also you should know that the average product takes about a year and a year and a half in development before it comes out. So there are a lot of steps before you take a laptop on your hand uh, that happen from this person and all the other development teams. So that was the fourth uh, example that I wanted to give you. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. There are many, many different ways that you can contribute to this industry, uh, many technologies, many emerging technologies and models that will be uh, coming up very soon. And uh, I wish you make a very good decision uh, for your career forward. Thanks very much.